Welcome to WEAC Radio's Dick Gregory Listening Sessions on Health Disparities. I am your host, Dr. Sanjeev Sriram, Dr. America Health Justice Correspondent for the network. And with us is Ms. Eliza, Alyssa Silverman. She is DC Council Member at Large. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of paid family leave because for a lot of my patients and their parents, they work at jobs that don't allow them to take time off easily to either go for their kids' doctor's appointments, take time off to take care of that child when they're sick or even hospitalized, and even to look after their own health. And, you know, when families are put in these false choices of they can either keep their job or they can keep their family's health, one or the other starts to suffer. And so I was a big fan of paid family leave when I saw it come before the council. And I was wondering if you could just talk about how does the Paid Family Leave Act fit into these tough false choices that so many families face? Um, well, thank you so much, Dr. Sriram. And I couldn't have said it better than you. Uh, so paid family leave will be a benefit, most especially to workers who are in some of our lower wage employment jobs, uh, working for um, re in retail, for example, TJ Maxx. Um, one of the most heartbreaking stories I heard during the paid family leave debate was a district resident who worked at the TJ Maxx right near City Hall, um, who had breast cancer. And of course, we have the Family and Medical Leave Act, which allows you to take unpaid leave. Um, but there are a lot of workers, especially who are in lower wage jobs, who just can't afford to take a day off. And the story she told was that um, she just couldn't afford to take the time off. And then schedule-wise, it was making her her employer was making it difficult to um, get time off for her chemotherapy treatments, and she just decided she should quit her job. That's not a choice that we want our residents to make. Um, the other most heartbreaking stories, and I'll admit it's because I have aging parents, so I think I really relate, is uh, we had many district residents who told us that in the final days of a parent's life, and often, as you know, you don't know when the final day is. Um, so one of our uh, supporters, Kim Mitchell, who's a Ward 7 resident, works at Macy's downtown. She actually, on our Facebook page, tells a story about how when her mom uh, caught pneumonia, you know, she didn't think that was going to be the um, last time she'd see her mom. Uh, and she had to make the choice once again between going to work or caring for her mom. And um, her stepfather took her mom to the hospital, and that's the last time she saw her. So, um, you know, since the Paid Family Leave Act was passed, it seems like it's been under some kind of threat either you know, very uh, subtly or not so subtly. So could you just walk us through, like, what's the status of the Paid Family Leave Act and, what, like, how do we protect it and what's going on with it right now? Um, great question. So for um, your viewers who are unfamiliar with paid family leave, let me just give a quick explainer, which is right now um, workers in the district have the right to unpaid leave. This is the, what's known as FMLA, the Family and Medical Leave Act. So in the district, you have the right to take up to 16 weeks of unpaid leave for a qualifying health condition, whether it's to take care of yourself or a loved one, or uh, let's say for new parents, either with newborns or adopted children, take time off for that. But, that, but it's unpaid. What, uh, what our bill, and now the law, would do, um, the uh, paid paid family leave would do is allow you to receive some compensation when you take that time off. Um, so under our law, you would get eight weeks uh, for either the birth of a child or adoption of a child, six, up to six weeks for taking care of a family member. And it is uh, the same language as the Family and Medical Leave Act, and two weeks to take care of yourself. Um, and what we are doing right now, so the status is that we passed the law, and now we are implementing the law. We are setting up what is an insurance system, essentially, for the district. Um, in July of next year, uh, employers, it's an employer-based contribution. So uh, private employers in the district, I'll take a pause. <laughs> 
So private employers in the district will pay 0.62% of their payroll into this system. Uh, and then in July of 2020, a year later, district workers will be able to benefit. So let's say that you're um, a pregnant mom. Um, what you would do is submit um, your medical paperwork that you've gotten from your OBGYN saying, yes, I'm pregnant, um, and I'd like to receive the eight weeks of compensation when the baby is born. Um, and I, I'm... I, I'll be honest with you, we're working out the regulations, whether the hospital would say, yep, the baby's here, or whether you would have to do that. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it's still being worked out, but basically when the baby is born, you would take those eight weeks, and then you would receive the payment from our paid family leave office. And so that's a really helpful breakdown for how paid family leave is supposed to work in the district. Yeah, so then, like, but it looks like there's some threats that are going to make it not work so great. And could you just, like, talk to us a little bit about what are those threats and what can our viewers do about it? Sure. Um, so there are certain people who don't want to um, do paid family leave. Uh, Mayor Bowser hasn't been that supportive. Um, and certain of big institutions in the city. So when we're talking about big employers in the District of Columbia, we're not talking about Walmart. Um, we're talking the, about some of the biggest uh, private sector employers are our universities. They have been resistant to paid family leave. Um, their argument is that we already do it and we would have to pay more to do this, um, but they've never produced evidence that that would be the case. Um, so what residents can do if they feel strongly about paid family leave is let me and my colleagues know and the mayor know that I really want this for my family, for our city. And let me just add, um, Dr. Sriram, that um, as you probably know, there are other states who have been doing paid family leave. And I should also add in that the U.S. is just an anomaly in the rest of the world. There are only three countries in the world that don't offer paid family leave. Um, so this is commonplace throughout the world. Um, but there are many states that are doing it as well. California does it. New Jersey does it. Rhode Island does it. New York is implementing. And Washington State. So California alone, that's like close to 50 million people, um, a sizable portion of our country. And, what, and California has been doing it now for 15 years. And what they've found, the business argument is this is a threat to businesses. California hasn't found that at all. In fact, what California has found is that it's been a benefit. Of course, the health benefit we have to mention that um, there are studies that show that uh, paid family leave reduces infant mortality and also helps with the health of the mom. And you can think about like with newborns, when you have a cesarean section, that is a trauma to your body. It's a wonderful thing to have a child, but there's also a lot of recuperation, that time that you need um, when you don't have a natural birth. Um, I, you know, I think many um, women in the city know that either from having C-sections or having friends who have them. It takes a long time to recuperate. Um, so there are real health benefits, but what California found is there's actually benefits even to business. Um, and that's why we see a lot of businesses adopting paid family leave programs themselves. Walmart does paid family leave. Hilton Hotels does paid family leave. You see a lot of businesses that have women in their workforce doing paid family leave now. And the question maybe some of your viewers will want to know is, well, why? You know, if our business community is saying this is going to hurt them, why are other businesses doing it? Because there's a benefit to business. Let's use Hilton Hotels as an example. Um, they have a lot of women in their workforce and the housekeeping uh, staff. Um, certainly, if you're a new employee, you're going to clean a room a lot slower than an experienced uh, housekeeper. Um, so there's a benefit to giving people paid leave to either take care of themselves or their family members and then be able to come back and for those businesses to retain those workers. They've also found um, two other, so certainly there's a benefit in terms of productivity. What they've also found as well is there's a benefit to recruitment and that a lot of people now are asking, do you offer paid family leave? Um, and I think a lot of people think about um, millennials in their 20s and 30s, and certainly I think a lot of people who are moms or future moms and dads are asking 
But, you know, it hits people at all ages of their life. I mean, you just never know when a health issue is going to come up. As I mentioned, I have parents in their 70s and 80s, blessed to have them alive. But one of the things my brother and I constantly think about is what happens when there's a health crisis and how are we going to respond and do the right thing by our mom and dad. Um, And, you know, and then sometimes health crises happen to you. You get in a car accident. You can't come back to work right away. Um, Or you have cancer. Um, So these these, um, health incidents happen to all of us. Um, And what California has found is it's been a benefit to businesses because they're able to keep their good employees. Um, Their employers are more productive when they actually come back because they've been able to recuperate. And they're loyal. They appreciate the paid family leave. People appreciate when they're allowed to take care of themselves and their family members. One of the questions that some some of our viewers might have is like, so what's the difference between requiring employers to offer the policy versus having a central fund for people living in the city to kind of rely on? So um, to, to use sort of a wonky term, it spreads the risk. So I kind of, you want to think about it in terms of unemployment insurance. This will work a lot like unemployment insurance, which is something that employers pay into as well. One of the false narratives is that, well, all these Maryland and Virginia people are going to benefit. And what about district residents? Well, it's an employer-based benefit just like unemployment insurance or just like the minimum wage. Um, We don't have a minimum wage for people who live in Virginia who work in D.C. and Maryland who work in D.C. And, in fact, the district uh, pays the unemployment insurance of Virginia residents and Maryland residents. Um, So that's how it would work. You know, we're so, we've been campaigning so long I've lost my thread, though. What were you asking, Dr. Uh, Srinam? Oh, requiring, yeah. So what this would do is... um, create, it sort of spreads the risk in that, um, so here, here's the deal for employers, especially small businesses. Right now, say you have an employee you really love who has breast cancer. What most small employers face, and so, so that person has the right to take the uncompensated time off, but most employers want to help that person. You know, they know that without that paycheck, they just can't survive. So right now, what the uh, employers who really feel responsible for their employees are doing is just paying out of pocket their salary. Um, By creating an insurance program, you're making it less expensive because not everyone's going to use it, right? Um, And sort of the insurance term is it spreads the risk. And if you think about it, it's kind of like getting car insurance, right? So we have car insurance and we have this sort of stable payment that we make for when we... for when our car gets totaled, frankly, right? So when the car gets totaled, you're going to be paying thirty, thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. We have insurance where we pay, you know, maybe a thousand dollars a year, so that if that car gets totaled, we don't have to pay thirty thousand dollars out of pocket. Um, that's the basic concept. Well, Council Member Silverman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you walking us through paid family leave, and we hope all of our listeners take the time to really learn about this issue and vote next Tuesday and, uh, and make this a big priority in their vote. You've been listening to We Act Radio's Dick Gregory Listening Sessions on Health Disparities. I'm your host, Dr. Sanjeev Sriram, and we'll be right back. You see, remember, we know something that most folks don't know. All the sickness that black folks have, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, all of that, nobody will die here today because there's an energy that supersedes all pain when you know your pain is being administered to. 